Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. We are starting the lessons on the deity of Christ and all that we have in Him. When we learn all that we have in Him, we will never ever complain again. We will always be rejoicing in Him because as we see in 1 John, 1 John, John the Apostle wrote the book of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. And he's, this is only that which is a trinity is capable of fellowship with the Godhead, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, his Holy Spirit dwells within our bodies. Our bodies is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He says holy because we are commanded to be holy as he is holy. And while I'm here, I'm going to read that because I'll just have to turn later. And I want you to understand that in 1 Peter, it teaches us these wonderful truths about holiness. We are to be holy as he's holy. And this is the only way that we are commanded to live. And this is the truth. And here he says in chapter 1 of Peter, verse 15, But as ye, he which hath called you is holy. You see, since he's holy, I must serve him in holiness. So be ye holy in all matter of conversation. Our conversation is to be about him. Verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And you must always understand you can never have eternal life apart from the Holy Spirit that comes to dwell in you. And he takes the word of God, he takes the blood of Jesus Christ and implants it into us. And we are made alive. We are in bondage. We are a child of the devil and we have disobeyed God all these years. And any moment that you call upon him to save you, he will save you. This is the only way you could ever know. And it is the blood. And while I'm here in 1 Peter 1.18, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the blood of Jesus Christ, with the precious blood of Christ. And then here it says also in 1 Peter 1, Sin, this is verse 22, Sin, you have purified your souls. It is the blood that makes an atonement for your soul. That's why if you don't receive Christ and the blood cleanses your soul, you will go to an eternal hell. Your soul will go there and you will never ever know peace and, and you'll never have a, a drink. No living water to drink. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, we are one in Christ, we are to love each other. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. What is our heart? Our intellect, our emotions, and our will. The greatest need today is divine love for one another. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For this, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached 
on to you. Now, if you don't know what corruption is, I want you to listen what he has prepared for us. In 1 Peter 1, verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Now, this is how you are to live, knowing that you have this divine spirit living in you, his divine nature. How could we sin against our body? How could we? And then not only that, but here's another thing while we're talking about this, that he goes to prepare a place for us. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The next event for true believers is for us to be raptured, to meet him in the clouds. And just before that verse, he says, in my Father's house are many mansions. He's preparing mansions for us, and none of this cost us anything. Everything he does is for us, free. And this, I'll just show you this list. This is the most amazing thing. And I have just started it. And it is all of these things that I have on this page. That's what we receive when we receive Christ. And this, and I've just started. And you have all of these things. In fact, every good and perfect gift is from him. Why could we ever sin against a holy God? So while we're here in 1 John, His Word is heavenly grace. His Word is a voice full of majesty. His Word is powerful. You've got to learn this book to have this truth. And here, this teaches us how to live, and it teaches us 1 John everlasting love. He loves you no matter what you've done. And he says the first thing in John 1.1, 1, 1, 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, that which was from the beginning, he's talking about Christ, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. And then he wants us to have fellowship with him. After we become a child of God, if we sin against this body, we cannot have our prayers answered. That's why you don't see answers to prayer. And then he says in verse 4, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. I know this joy of the Lord is my strength. I know what this is to live the abundant life. And that's why he wants everyone to know it. And then, listen at this, this is a message that God is light and in him is no darkness. We don't have any darkness. We have his Shekinah glory. And if we walk in that light, according to this book, we have fellowship one with another and then the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. No guilt. You don't have guilt. You don't have any, Satan has no power against you because Christ conquered death. He conquered Satan on the cross. And that's our free gift. Let's receive it today. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee for all that we have in Christ. The riches that go on and on and on forever and ever. And the wealth. And Christ is heir of all things. And we are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Oh, how we thank thee that we can give these messages out to each and every person that has no one that loves them. Brings tears to my eyes that a child could be abused. I would love to have a home for every one of these little children. We must get the word of God to them. I pray that every person that's a true Christian right now, because God only hears those that are his. We can't call him father until we are born again. 
that we will get on our knees tonight and ask God to protect these little children from all satanic powers, all demonic spirits. And we will teach them what true love is. Save 100-fold today. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we're seeing once again these wonderful truths that God has given to us. So I'm going to read 1 John 5, 13. I want you to know that you can have this wonderful truth and know it and live it. 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life and this life is in his Son. And then we will see in this lessons also, while we're here, this is the reason the Lord has given me these, to warn you against apostasy. Verse John 4, 16. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the whole world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in God, and God in him, herein is love made perfect. This is what we need today. The world needs this. And there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. Fear comes from Satan. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? This commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Chapter 3, verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Now this is a warning in 1 John 2 verse 18. Now you have to understand this so you will not be deceived by the people of the world that's trying. They hate us. The world is our enemy. And God loves you. He says, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last day, the last time. This is when we are living. When you see all the nations of the world uprising against the things of the world, if you know Christ, you don't do that. We obey Him and love one another. And they are going to be deceived. That's the false government, the one world government, and the false religion. You see, we have perfect peace. We don't fear those things. And they are going to be deceived. That's how the seven-year tribulation begins in Revelation chapter 6. And that is the seven seals, the seven judgments, and the seven bowls are the seven vials. They are going to believe the Antichrist. He's going to give them false peace and promise them false peace. Now, we saw last week how we are free through Jesus Christ. We have perfect freedom in Him. Now, when that Antichrist comes, they are going to be under the rule and reign of the Antichrist, and they have to obey what he says after they take that number 666. And then they can't even buy or sell unless they obey him. They are going to be such slaves to sin, nothing compared to what it is today. Then you have no freedom at all. Now, this is what we're knowing that you have to know so you will not be deceived. 
They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Professing Christians is the greatest hindrance to true believers in the whole world. Professing Christians know nothing of this peace that we have. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. That is eternal life. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Verse 25. Now this is 1 John 2, beginning in verse 18. We're warned against apostates. Apostasy means turning from the truth who deny the deity of Christ. And he says, you're a liar. That's what his word says. And then verse 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised even eternal life. John 17, 3. This is life eternal, that ye may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And then he says the same thing in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. He that believeth not on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. And verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So we see here what God is warning us in the last days. So we must go back to John chapter 20. This is why he wrote the book of John. You, this is the most exciting thing. Listen what he says is the reason John wrote the book of John. And this is chapter 20, verse 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. You see, at the time when we'll be raptured to be with the Lord, when we take our last breath on this earth, our spirit and our soul goes to be with the Lord. We're carried by the angels into heaven. Our bodies go back to dust. When Christ comes in the cloud, those that have died, their bodies are going to be raised. They're going to get a body of light. 186,241 miles per second is the speed of light. We're going to receive a body of light just like Christ had when he was on the earth at his transfiguration. With James. That's when John said he had seen him. John, Peter, James, and John. And he had, a, it was a noonday, and his body was as light as the noonday sun, as bright. We're going to have a body of light that never hurts. That's another gift that we receive. This is another gift that we receive. That's why this book is written. That's why we can know he himself is eternal life. To know Christ is life's highest attainment. To know him still better is to be entirely dependent on him. To have none other but him, never losing sight of him. To see Christ in everything. That is the highest attainment God has given us. To know Christ, 
you don't need anything else in this world because then you get in this book and you read it and then you know that you have eternal life. Then we go back just a little to John once again and then we see in this lesson the book of John is the apostle of love. As I said last week, 57 times love is in here. The prominent words are believe, believe, and believeth. Now, I, when I taught my children, I told them, everyone, to read the book of John through in 21 days and count how many times believe is in the book of John. It's impossible to please him without believing. It's impossible to please him without faith. So I have faith in every word that he says, and I live that, and then I have the joy of the Lord. This is what he wants. So this is that as many as believe on him, on Christ, as the Son of God, you have eternal life. And then we read verse 14, and this is another blessed, blessed truth, the incarnation the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. His grace is sufficient for every need. And then look what was the saddest thing. It's verse 11, John 1, 11. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. Today, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to answer that. What are you going to do when the time comes for you to take your last breath? Are you going to a place of torment or to this beautiful place God has prepared for you? God doesn't send anyone there. God doesn't send anyone there. He made hell for the devil and his angels that fell when he fell. This is the only way you can ever know that you have this eternal life is to do what this book says. Man can never get to heaven without being born again by the Spirit of God and the blood of of Jesus Christ. He hath washed us from our sins in his own blood. And then the next few weeks after we finish with these, we're going to learn that we are in 1 Peter chapter 2, that not only do we have, we are a saint of God, everybody that is a child of of God is a saint. We're not a sinner anymore. Now, he says in chapter 2 of Peter 1, 1 Peter 2, ye are as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. We are a priest of God. He says this, the believer's life in view of the suffering of Christ. Verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, in hell, there's no light. It's a blackness of darkness forever. And then we see, when we come to the book of Revelation, it teaches us these things. That we, he's our great high priest in heaven. We're one with him. And now, we are to offer our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto him, which is thy reasonable service thy divine service. This is Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests 
unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. We're going to learn about all of these truths that we are a priest of God. He is a priest over the house of God. And we are an heir of Christ. And he is appointed heir of all things. So that makes us one with Christ. And then you can see this is the most amazing thing. You are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified by the blood of Christ. And now, in Acts chapter 17, I want you to listen to this. Verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, that's why this is a heavenly birth, a heavenly calling, a heavenly worship. We worship him in spirit and in truth through the word of God. He dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything. Sin he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations, of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. This is what we need today. And this is the only way that this can happen, is for us to know that Christ gave the highest price for us. Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. You study these lessons, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. We are his, and we are to live holy lives. As we study more and more about Christ, Christ is one person. He is truly man as any of us. God prepared for him a body, a special body, but it is the blood of Jesus, his son, that cleanses us from all sin. It is God that became man with a body of flesh and blood. Let your faith rejoice in this. Thank you.